And now, a highlight from Animal Radio on iHeartRadio. I was explaining earlier how on occasion where I got to pet set a dog and take it to the park, one of my neighbor's dogs, I found out that the women just kept coming over. They would ask, oh, what kind of dog? How old is that dog? Can what's I, his name? Can I, what's his name? Can I pet the dog? And it was a great way for me to uh, meet ladies. And Judy has told me stories when you were in the dating scene. Uh-huh. You would actually bring your cats out to well, sort of mingle with the date to see if... Yeah, I'd bring were... my date over to the house. Okay. And if my cat liked them, then I knew that they were good. If my cat looked at them and took off running, then then that... That was I, a deal was, breaker? There was no second dates. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah, I just, you're a great judge of they character. They are, you know, and plus I don't want somebody, you know, hanging around that my cat doesn't like. But like you say, they're a good judge of character. And it turns out my cat was right every time. I wasn't. I didn't know how to pick them, but my cat sure did. <laughs> and I bet our next guest will agree wholeheartedly, Dr. Helen Fisher. She's the Senior Research Fellow at the Kinsey Institute. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm delighted to be with you. So tell us about the research you found out about how people are more attractive when they have a pet with them. Well, I did a study with Match.com. I'm their chief scientific advisor, and we, we polled about 1,200 people who did have animals, cats and dogs, and we wanted to know how they felt about other people. And just like uh, has just been said, um, women really are attracted to uh, men who have a pet, particularly a dog, much more of a dog than a cat. And it is just like you said, it's chick bait. I mean, women want to know. And it's actually a very honest signal. I mean, a man who has a dog um, is able to follow a schedule. Uh, is able to play with uh, an individual, is, is reliable. I mean, they got to show up at a certain hour to feed the dog. They, if they go away for the weekend, they've got to make arrangements for the dog. I mean, uh, it's a real commitment. You've got to take it to the dog hospital uh, when it gets sick, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very honest signal in, in that men send to women when um, uh, saying, listen, I'm, I'm not only here and I'm approachable, you've got an easy way to approach me, just come up and talk to my dog, um, but also that uh, I'm a caring person, a nurturing person, a person who can take responsibility for a very vital living creature and follow the schedules and, and give it the love and the care that it needs. So it's a very honest signal for mate choice. Now, we're talking about this uh, in respects to dating and uh, attraction between the sexes here, but it's also very useful in other ways, like panhandling. We'll see panhandlers that are <laughs> that have a dog with them seem to get more money, don't they? Yes, that's right. And, I, and it's because, once again, I guess even the panhandler might be not have any money, but obviously has enough caring to take care of an animal, and perhaps people who give money to a panhandler hope that they're also giving it to the dog. So, uh, and then another thing is, uh, you know, if a man is with a dog, uh, it's easier for him to um, uh, get a woman's telephone number. So it's chick bait on, on a big level. And I think for very clear reasons, it's a very honest signal. I mean, you know, both men and women are constantly having to send signals of who they are uh, in order to attract the attention of the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever. And um, and this is an honest signal. Uh, you, so many questions, so little time. Okay. <laughs> if I have a picture of me with a cat or a picture of me with a dog, what is going to be more appealing, do you think? Very definitely the dog. Um, cats are not anywhere near as likely to be used as what we call a social tool. Um, <laughs> and it's because, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, they... They don't always come when you call. Uh, they don't uh, chase after a ball. You don't take them to the park and play with them. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to advertise with a cat. Uh, uh, they're nowhere near as um, willing to, you know, be man's kind best friend. <laughs> Whereas dogs, you can take them to the park. You can go and play games with them. You know, you can really show, show them off in all kinds of places, just like your, uh, you know, as was just said, I mean, uh, you know, she needed to bring a, a men to her house to show her the cat, uh, to show them the cat, whereas you don't have to have, bring people to the house to show them a dog. You can walk the dog in many ways, play with the dog, even meet, you know, even meet people uh, certainly just on the street as you're walking along. So a dog is much more um, uh, efficient uh, uh, social tool for the pickup. Wow, and uh, but you see, this, a couple of the ladies in the studio are shaking their head in, in disagreement here. If I see a big guy, bur- big burly guy with a cat, a little, especially a kitten, it just melts my heart. <laughs> 
Oh, my gosh. Well, I think it would melt anybody's heart, but it's hard to carry kittens around. I mean, you can't put it on a leash and walk it every night at, at, at 9 p.m. in the park and have it play with all the other cats. I mean, cats don't do that. I happen to love cats myself, so I'm all in sympathy for that. But the bottom line is they're not as good as a social tool. Now, the, I guess cat people are more introverts because they're sitting home watching cat videos because you can't, you can't get your cat out to the dog park, so you have to watch videos of other cats online. <laughs> well, the other thing is I'm a, I'm a person who travels absolutely constantly, and uh, I can leave a cat at home, uh, and the cat will fend for itself really quite happily. Uh, but a dog, you've really got to be around. You've got to you know, be almost a constant. And by the way, you know, one thing that's interesting is in these days – Cats and dogs are becoming family members. Uh, you know, apparently the amount of uh, cat food, dog food, pet care, and better food, better living inside is more and more increasing. You know, I'm an anthropologist, and in a lot of cultures, a dog is really just regarded as uh, some a, an animal that stays outside and is used only for protection and hunting. We are with anthropologist Dr. Helen Fisher. She says hanging out at the park with your dog will help you meet women. But does it work the other way around? We'll find out next. We are with Dr. Helen Fisher. She's a senior research fellow at the Kinsey Institute. She's done a little bit of research about how attractive you are with a dog and without a dog. I thought it was very interesting when you said that, you know, your cat was better than you were at at, at judging people. Um, And it's important to watch how somebody responds to your pet because now this is another really, you know, part of the family. And if a, a new family member can't get along with your animals... It's going to be a problem. Mm. Now, well, I have a question. What about, like, does it matter where you get your pet from? Do, do you get any extra bonus for, say, finding a dog on the street versus, you know, having your neighbor's litter get a puppy and you, and you buy a puppy off of them? Does it matter? Yeah, I mean, I, did, I haven't studied that, but I would certainly, as an anthropologist, think that the more altruistic you, the signal you can send, the more effective the signal will be. So um, probably if you can, you know, pick the dog up from the pound, it gives you some extra... Uh, you know, extra mate uh, mate value. <laughs> so we're thinking we're thinking mutt over purebred is what you're saying. I, I'm yeah, just wondering no, if yeah, some people are going to want a, a, a pure a purebred because they're they're in the business of showing animals. Or you know, I mean, there's going to be different kinds of pet owners. There's going to be some that want to show them off, and there's some that are going to want to save stray animals. One thing that's very interesting is that when you interact with a dog. Um, apparently it, um, it escalates uh, oxytocin activity in mm. the brain. And oxytocin is linked with feelings of attachment and calm. And so the person who gets a dog or, or, or even a cat who's probably constantly stroking that animal is going to probably also have a, a sort of a global feeling of, uh, of calm, uh, which is a, an attachment, which is also very uh, very effective. But one thing that's interesting that we found in our study at Match.com was that men with a dog really attract women, but women with a dog uh, don't get quite the same response from men. And I think the reason is that, you know, for millions of years, women have really looked for a partner to help them raise their babies. And a dog with a man is really a signal that he can take care of something that is not terribly is more helpless and 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 needs their care whereas men for millions of years really needed a woman who could bear them healthy babies they can do that by just looking at a woman and talking to uh, to a woman they don't really need to see her with a dog so uh dogs are much more effective as tick bait for men than uh, than for women yeah this is true Oh, you want to go out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all amazing and, and great. I'm glad you're really validating something that I've known for a long time. Dr. Helen Fisher, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, and happy days. You're listening to Animal Radio. Visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android.